Hi, we are Fertile Builders. This is a course project of chemistry in first course of uh, civil engineering in the uh, UPC of Barcelona. Uh, our objective is to study how could construction be in 200 years and beyond. So to do this, we're focusing on three major uh, fields. The first one is nanotechnology. We think it's going to be the main uh, technological thing in the future. Then the Internet of Things, which is going to make it uh, all work together. And finally, multifunctionality. As we think, materials are going to have more than one function and are going to do more than one thing at once. Hey, I am Nasser Suel. I am with the group of my friends, so I am here to about, uh, discuss about the nanotechnology. What is nanotechnology? To study an application of extremely small particles. This is what is nanotechnology. The size of nanotechnology is 0 0.1 nanometer to 100 nanometers. That is very small. So application of nanotechnology is different field to achieve different substances with the different functions. So. Nanotechnology with the bottom discipline lineup to build a microscopic building like we can use mm, small material to build large things. And it is being used um, for centuries. But the main, the study of that is focusing that is potted in, in, in cement is recently have been work on it. Okay, and what is, and we go for size of nanotechnology. It is very difficult to imagine the size of nanotechnology. As you can see in the mm, microscope, and uh, if we take one nanometer equal to the tennis ball, so we can say this is, could be equal to Earth. So it it will very difficult to imagine the size of nanotechnology that is very too small. So, cement. So we are here with that, uh, now we are with the limited to our uh, course that is cement. So composition of cement. Cement is composition of lime, silica, alumina, iron oxide, water, and some other additions. That is when we get mixture of this, we get uh, amount of cement. So property of uh, cement is to greater workability. That is bad on how much you water add with this one. And currently, the cement is the most common binder that is usually in the industry. So to, and with nanotechnology, it's changed the field of um, construction and everything that you wear. Okay, nanotechnology in cement. How we can use nanotechnology with the cement? We can implement it with the, that it control the CO2 emission of carbon dioxide and the low crack existence, low occurring period, increasing demand of, uh, from 2010 to 2013, we can say the demand of cement is increasing. So we can say with the use of nanotechnology in cement, it gives us more benefits. So it's also as low tensile strength compared to its compressive strength. There are many possible additions to cement, and we will see some of the most important ones. The first of them is carbon nanotubes which are allotropes of carbon with a cylindrical nanostructure, as you can see. They are useful because they increase the mechanical strength and durability of a cement, and as well, they enable cement to sense and to respond thanks to its piezoelectric properties. And it has also low weight. The second one is nanocalcium silicate, which is helpful because it increases the hardness of a cement and it also shortens the C3S hydration period. C3S is one of the most important mineral phases in cement and it is also known as alite. Another one is nanotitania. Nanotitania helps um, making cement more resistant to flames and also it gives cement a self cleaning capacity which means that cement is able to repel dirt, dust, mud, etc. Nanosilica is 
is useful when added to a fiber, ma fiber sheet to create a matrix. This matrix has strong bonds between the cement surface and the fiber reinforcement. And it also helps to um, close small cracks on the surface, as well as increasing the, the durability, hardness, and reducing the CO2 emissions. And the last one is graphene. Graphene is going to be, without doubt, one of the most important materials in the future. That's why it's, it's interesting to explore its possibilities as an addition to cement. However, if we add graphene or graphene nanoplatelets to c common cement, for example, Portland cement, uh, graphene breaks. That's why we, we, sh we should look for a different kind of cement, which is polymer cement, because polymer's properties prevent graphene from breaking. And as you may know, uh, cement with, with graphene is stronger and it, and it and the cement becomes also thermally and electrically conductive, which means that it is able to sense and therefore it can work as a sensor by itself. So the second topic we're focusing in is the Internet of Things. So what is the Internet of Things? It's a huge network of connected elements that can cooperate to serve a purpose. For example, alerting mechanisms, uh, monitoring, or controlling traffic, for, ex for instance. Uh, in this Internet of Things, we want to emphasize the importance of sensors and uh, specifically the part nanotechnology is going to uh, take in it. So, we are assuming that most of the sensors are going to be made of nanotechnology as it was explained before. For example, graphene could be a sensor for lots of things. And then, last but not least, uh, the objective of Internet of Things is to make everything a bit like automatized. It's to make a bit data of elements in order to make them work by themselves, like artificial intelligence. So, what could it be used for in civil engineering? Uh, using sensors, it could be used to monitor heat, uh, the absence or presence of cracks, to know if one structure is okay or not, also, the strain and stress for the same reason. How could we do that? For example, uh, we could put a sensor in a bridge and if too much cars or trucks passed, the sensor would, send, would tell the computer, okay, there's too much weight, the bridge uh, is, uh, is supporting too much stress. Uh, so then the computer would put a uh, traffic light in red right before the bridge so no more cars passed in and then the bridge would be in better status. Also it could be used to sense the fatigue of construction materials along the years or um, another example could be to sense the dimensions of for example the vehicle the transport that pass through a road. Okay, now we are seeing the last topic we have to see about the future, multifunctionality. Multifunctionality is defined as the quality of possessing or carrying out several functions. In relation to civil engineering, this is relevant because a material can carry out a function that is a structure as well as a non-structural function. That is, for example, a material could self-damp, self-repair, or self-heat. These multifunctional materials are very related to smart objects. Okay, let's see one of the first applications of multifunctional materials. Self-sensing, self-cleaning, and self-healing. Okay, there's a type of, of materials which is called 
engineer cement teaches uh, composites which are able to detect cracks and to give an appearing uh, self-healing effect because it can constrain the width of the cracks. This was carried out by the health, the, the Harriet Watt University in 2015. Later on, there was another project which was uh, carried out by Delft University of Technology, which consists in, by using an activator, which was calcium hydroxide, combined with slag, the, uh, it was possible to obtain a self-healing effect too. Last but not least, there's another important one and surprising, which is um, accomplished by using a specific kind of bacteria which, which can endure uh, very basic conditions and can carry out through a metabolistic process a self-healing uh, uh, effect. This is quite complex, but basically it's based on the conversion of calcium um, lactate into, carbonate, uh, into calcium carbonate. Okay, now we can see also see another application of multifunctionality, but this time into roads. We can put some, we can use some multifunctional materials in the roads so that we can get um, many function, many useful uh, advantages of this that would be, for example, to carry out the speed controls, to detect the weight of the automobiles which are flowing through a, through a road to detect, for example, if any, any car uh, commits an infringement. For example, here we can see this image in the road that would tell us information, any specification we want about it, about a car. More functions, self-monitoring. Deborah Chang is a professor of, from Massachusetts who uh, carried out a project about uh, adding carbon fibers and in addition to what we've seen already about detecting the strain and stress exerted, it can also uh, self-monitor. That is, it can self-monitor the damage which the, the materials experiences. Another important one, another important multifunction uh, we have is a light transmitting. We could use concrete in ways that the, this concrete would be translucent and so that it could lead to a, an energy safe and this energy, this solar energy during the day can be stored and harnessed in order to, when needed, that is in the night or when the, the, there's no light in, the, in a house, for example, it can be uh, used when needed. And more functions we have is the vibration-free cement. This basically comes, comes to mean that we can get a more compact and a more sturdy uh, cement by eliminating the, the air trap in the voids of the cement structure. And then how, as usual, the, in the cement production, it's important to take into account how much workability we want in the expense of how mechanical strength we want. If we increase the mechanical strength, we reduce uh, the, the workability, which is uh, acquired by the flowability of the cement. Another important one is the self-expanding cement, which is obtained by combining Portland cement with another expansive material. And this basically allows us to do two things. The first one is to offset, offset or counterbalance the shrinkage which is produced in the hydration of cement, of Portland cement. And we can also make the, the, the cement to be subjected to a pre-stress and so get a higher mechanical strength. However, this is not all, it, this thing also has some drawbacks, such as that it has a high cost because it's really, uh, really fragile. And then the, trans, the storage and the, and the transport, it's very delicate. And another drawback is that it's very difficult to find the right proportion in order to carry, to produce this cement. And finally, it's, it's all obvious that as any type of cement, it's very uh, sensitive to moisture. And finally, our conclusions of the work. Well, we've concluded so far that nanotechnology, multifunctionality, and Internet of Things are not things that are very different, but are clearly intertwined. That is to say, one application of nanotechnology easily is covered by the other two. However, we've seen that these three, these three fields allow us many, many advantages in, it, in them, 
which are improving the efficiency of our technology and construction, of course, and improving the sustainability and the durability of our materials, as well as the, the specific specificity and complexity of the task that technology can do for us in, construction, in the construction industry. Of course, the safety is improved and the overall cost of the production, the construction process it will be lower because this nanotechnology and internet of things and multifunctionality aims to, make, aims to reduce the price by getting these materials at a higher cost. So uh, this is all for today and thanks for watching.